this is a review for acceleration problems. Before we start, please, I want you to watch the following video. Okay, now that what you watch it, let's observe here we have, let's say we have teacher Marco here, okay? And let's say we want to find the acceleration. We don't know it, okay? Let's don't pay attention to this. But we know that we have our formula is acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time, okay? So the first time we have is zero seconds and the final time, let's say is three seconds. So we have time equals three seconds, okay? Then my initial velocity in zero seconds will be of 1.069 meters per second. So initial velocity equals 1.069 meters per second. I know these are super specific numbers, but I want you to understand it through this short video. Then, at the end, in second number three, we have a velocity of 3.984 meters per second. So your final velocity equals 3.984 meters per second, okay? So with this information, you can get that acceleration equals final velocity, which was 3.984, 3.984 meters per second minus your initial velocity, which was 1.069, 1.069 meters per second divided by your time, which is three seconds. So acceleration, let's do the math. 3.9849 will give you 2.915 meters per second divided by three seconds, not squared, seconds, will give you 0 0.9716 meters over squared seconds. 0 0.9716 meters per squared second. Can you see that? You had a final velocity and initial velocity and time. You can also find the distance, you can find initial velocity, but I won't do it. Anyway, just for you, if you want to do this simulation, I'll put you the, the, um, the website so you can practice there if you need to, okay? here. The acceleration will be constant. It will never change. If I move it here from one side to another, then you would, it would be changing. Look. Okay. So if you move your acceleration, it will be moving faster. If you move, put the man in one place or another, and then you want certain velocity, see the acceleration was zero there he is moving just at a constant speed but if I add an acceleration so if you start playing with the variables you can see how the acceleration starts changing or the velocity or how much time you can calculate practically anything you need or you want okay and you can play with it later on okay now let's move to the problems I will show you the four different types of problems you can have. I say four because the acceleration can be positive or negative. So I'll start with the first one. Well, I'll start first of all writing you down the formulas. We have acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Then we have final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And then we have distance, which is Velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared divided by 2. When traveling a driver slows down from 36 to 16 meters per second in 12 seconds, what is a driver's acceleration? So first of all, my clue word is what? So under my data, I'll put acceleration equals question mark. 
Another clue word that I have here is slows down, which it means that my answer will be negative. Then I'll have two velocities and a time. So if you're not sure what variables you're using, you go to your formulas, because you already know that, that you're searching for acceleration, which is this one, and you will copy final velocity, initial velocity, and time under your data, because that's what you're sure you need. Final velocity, initial velocity, and time. In order to find them, you have from and to. I'm moving from 36 to 16. So my initial velocity will be 36 meters per second and my final velocity 16 meters per second. Okay, I'm moving from this one to this one. This will tell me which type of velocity I'm talking about. And at the end, we have the time of 12 seconds. Okay. Now we have acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So acceleration is 16 meters per second minus 36 meters per second divided by 12 seconds. It's important for you to don't get mixed up here, okay? Final goes with final and initial is the initial, okay? And I'll color them also. So you final velocity, final velocity, final velocity, initial velocity, initial velocity, and time. Okay, so now you start doing the math. 16 minus 36 will give you negative 20. Remember? I said if it says slows down, the answer will be negative. Meters per second divided by 12 seconds. So then you just need to divide 20 by 12. Now, the division goes like this. The 20 goes inside and the 12 goes outside. Remember that the one that is at the top, it's like the king and the king can't get wet in a rain, so goes inside the house. You divide it and your answer will be negative 1.6 meters over squared seconds. Now the meters over squared seconds, I got it through my, my, my taco lock or tortilla lock, outsides with outsides, because here I have under one, and insides with insides. So you have meters times one will give you meters, and seconds times seconds will give you squared seconds. The outside goes at the top and the inside goes at the bottom. That's why you have this as an answer. Now I'm switching to another type of acceleration problem. What is the acceleration? So my word what is telling me that I'm searching for acceleration. They're giving me two velocities and a time. So, final velocity, initial velocity, and time. Okay, so, if you were asking, teacher, what happens if I put my initial velocity at the top and final velocity at the bottom and then time? It happens anything, okay? Just make sure you're writing it correct. Now, from five meters per second, so that's your initial five meters per second, to your 45, meters per second and you have a time of 12 seconds. So you have acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So acceleration is 45 meters per second, that's your final velocity, minus 5 meters per second divided by 12 seconds. Acceleration will be equal to 45 minus 5 you will have 40 meters per second. And can you see here, I don't have a negative. And it's, you don't have a negative because they're telling you it's increasing. And you already know that if something increases, it's being positive, okay? Divided by 12 seconds. So you divide 40 by 12, and your answer will be 3.33. 
positive, okay? You don't need to put the plus sign, but you already know it's positive. Now let's review here again that tackle law. Outside with outside, here it's like having a one. So you have meters times one will give you meters and seconds times seconds will give you squared seconds. Teacher, I'm not sure how the tackle law works. Well, let me show you another way. Let's focus only on the units, okay? So it means that you are dividing meters over seconds in a giant fraction by seconds. Because we have a fraction at the top, it means that at the bottom, I need another fraction. So I'll put over one, okay? So if you put meters over seconds divided by seconds over one, you need to do the reciprocal in math. So meters over seconds times one over seconds, you multiply meters times one, you have meters divided by squared seconds because you multiplied seconds times seconds. That's how you get it. But instead of doing all of these and doing, it's easier for you to just think about a tackle law. If you multiply meters times one, just the same as here, you'll get meters at the top and seconds times seconds, just like you have it here in the reciprocal, you have squared seconds and you get the answer. Okay, now let's do problem number five. This one is about the final velocity. A car traveling at 100 kilometers per hour accelerates at the rate of three meters per squared second. What is its final velocity? So in my data, I need final velocity equals question mark and let's highlight all of the numbers because they will tell me something. 100 kilometers per hour, 3 meters per squared second, and 25 seconds. So right now I can focus on the time. I already, I already know that time equals 25 seconds, and it's given in seconds. I also know that the difference between acceleration and velocity is that my time is squared. Here I have hours, but it's not squared, so acceleration equals three meters over squared seconds and then I have my initial velocity which will be this one 100 kilometers per hour but do you remember in class I said that whenever you're doing a physics problem you need to observe your units you need to speak the same language so if you're speaking the same language let's say hello hello bonjour like we said in class we can't do it that way, so what do I need to do? Double box procedure. So I need to change it to meters per second in order I'm speaking in English the whole way. So you have 100 kilometers over hour. You put kilometers at the bottom, meters at the top, hours at the top, seconds at the bottom. That way you can cancel kilometers, kilometers, hours with hours, and in one kilometer you have 1,000 meters and in one hour you have 3,600 seconds and please remember if you still have doubts on the double or simple or one box procedure you can watch my video I have it in my YouTube channel okay or I'll post it to you also again in this canvas page so we have 100,000 divided by 3,600 and your answer is 27.7 meters per second. And now we can do our problem. Now that we're speaking the same language, okay? Meters per second, meters per squared second and seconds. That would be, well, that would be it. The formula is final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So final velocity equals your initial velocity, which is 27.7 meters per second, plus three meters over squared seconds times 25 seconds. According to your PEMDAS, the last thing that you will be doing is a plus sign. So first you need to do this part. So you have three times 25 will give you 75. So final velocity equals 27.7 meters per second 
plus 75. Now, I will cancel here. It's like having it over one, right? And in this part right here, it's like having it seconds times seconds. So you cancel one of the seconds with one of the seconds and you have meters over seconds. So your final velocity will be equal to 27.7 plus 75 and your answer will be 102.7 meters per second. Remember, because it's a velocity, in this one you won't add a square because it's not an acceleration. And then we will do a distance problem and the, and the distance problems are the ones we had more than a week doing them. So let's start. A car traveling at 90 kilometers per hour is uniformly accelerated at 2.3 meters per squared second. What distance will it travel during a 15 second interval after the acceleration begins? Okay, so the clue word, what? What distance? So data, we have D equals question mark. We already know that kilometers per hour is telling me a velocity because of the kilometers per hour. We also know that if I have a square in my time, it's an acceleration. And I also know that my time is given in seconds. You compare your units and you say, uh oh, I need to do my double box procedure. So you start 90 kilometers over hour Kilometers goes at the bottom, meters goes at the top. That way you can cancel. Remember, it needs to be in diagonal. Hours at the bottom, so hours at the top and seconds at the bottom. In one kilometer, 1,000 meters, and in one hour, 3,600 seconds, and this will give you 25 meters per second. So distance equals velocity times time plus acceleration times time squared divided by two. This one, and this one are not variables. The rest of them are. So, I'll just start inserting my velocity into the velocity, my time into my time, and my acceleration into my acceleration. So, distance equals 25 meters per second times the time which is 15 seconds plus your acceleration which is 2.3 meters over squared seconds times 15 seconds squared divided by 2. Let me highlight this for you. Velocity, I will put it in blue. Okay, but from here we got this one. Then you have time of 15 seconds, time here, time here. Remember the two, I just put it like that, but I need to put all of the time to the squared, okay? Including the seconds. And then we have the acceleration in yellow, okay? Now the first thing that we're doing is this part right here and the exponent. So we have distance equals 25 times 15, that will give you 375. This one, the seconds, it's like having it over one, so you cancel it. And we put meters plus 2.3 meters over squared seconds times 15 times 15, 225 squared seconds, because this one affects the number and the unit divided by 2. So now we have distance equals 375 meters plus 2.3 times 225 will give you 517.5. You cancel squared seconds with squared seconds and you have meters and you still need to divide it by 2. Then you have distance equals 
375 meters plus 517.5 divided by 2 will give you 258.75 meters and to that you add the um, 375 so your distance will be of 633.75 meters okay so quick review of what I just did so first I multiply this one and I have 375 meters. This one I just copy it the same way. This one I did the exponent, so 15 times 15 gave me this. Then I put it on divided by 2. The 375 meters I copy it the same. And then the my answer of, of these was 517. I multiplied 2.3 times 2 to 5, and then, again, I copy it, this one's the same, then this one I divided by 2, I copy it here, and at the end, I just add it, and I had my answer. So that's it for acceleration problems, make sure to clear your doubts, look for me if you need me, and have a great afternoon, guys. Bye-bye!